We've made a lot of Mac Pro videos in the last month, and the one thing that was consistent between all of them were all the comments about AMD's new Threadripper CPUs and how you can build a much cheaper PC that's also much more powerful. So we did just that. This right here is our $5,000 Threadripper PC, and in this video, we're going to compare it to our $15,000 Mac Pro in everything from features, benchmarks, thermals, fan noise, real world performance, and more. Now as a disclaimer, I do want to mention that this isn't a fair comparison in many ways. One big one being that the Mac Pro uses Mac OS, which is important for a lot of people, and at this point you can't even hackintosh this Threadripper. There are also a few ways that the Mac Pro absolutely kills this PC build, and we'll mention all of these important factors at the end of this video. When choosing the parts for this Threadripper PC, I wanted to make sure to match as much specs as possible, which required an $850 motherboard that comes jam-packed with features. So before we get into the performance testing, here's how the features of this PC compare to the Mac Pro. It comes with Wi-Fi 6 built-in compared to Apple's Wi-Fi 5, it comes with PCI Express Express 4 compared to 3 on the Mac, and just like the Mac Pro, it comes with dual 10 gigabit Ethernet, and it also supports ECC RAM, although we didn't use it for this build. It comes with much more I.O., including 10 USB-A ports, 7 of which support Gen 2 speeds, compared to just 2 ports on the Mac Pro that only support Gen 1 speeds. This PC build also has 2 USB-C ports and 2 Thunderbolt 3 ports, compared to 8 Thunderbolt 3 ports on the Mac Pro configuration. Configuration. Along with that, the motherboard in this PC comes with a bonus add-in storage card, which can raid up to four PCI Express 4.0 M.2 SSDs together for a massive 15,000 megabyte per second read speed. You can also easily add in a ton of different storage like hard drives, which isn't always easy or cheap on the Mac Pro. And the best feature of all is that this PC build can power Apple's 6K Pro XDR display in 10-bit at 6K resolution. We'll show you how we did that in just a minute. Here's a list of all of the parts we use for this PC build compared to the parts that are in the Mac Pro, and we have links down in the video description as well. Now, if you wanna know why we chose these specific parts, we discuss them in our step-by-step -step build guide that you guys can watch after this video to learn how you yourself can build this PC. One of the major annoyances we ran into with the Mac Pro is that Apple controls all of the driver updates for the graphics cards, forcing users to wait until they update Mac OS. But with Windows, part manufacturers can update their drivers on their own schedule, so you get updates much more often. Now getting into performance, we wanted to point out a massive advantage for the PC, and that's the ability to overclock, which you can't do on the Mac Pro. This setup is capable of overclocking up to 4.25 GHz, but it draws an extra 180 watts of power and puts out way more heat and fan noise for only 8% more performance, so we went back to stock for this comparison. So without further ado, let's start out with performance testing with Geekbench 5 CPU test. Unsurprisingly, this 32-core Threadripper CPU scored over two times the multi-core performance of our 12-core Mac Pro. But be sure to keep in mind that it only costs 42% more while getting over double the performance, which is an awesome bang for the buck. Now, we don't usually mention single-core performance, but it shocked us that this PC got a higher single-core score even though it has 20 more cores, which usually never happens, so ultimately, you're not sacrificing performance for tasks that only use one core. One benefit for the 12-core Xeon is that it supports up to 768GB of RAM compared to only 256 on this Threadripper CPU, but to be honest, not that many people actually need that much RAM. Now moving on to Cinebench R20, which pushes all of these cores to their max, the Threadripper performs even better, scoring 17,000 254 points compared to only 5,519 on the Mac Pro. However, it came at a cost of fan noise, even though this case is the Dark Base Pro 900 from Be Quiet, which is filled with sound dampening materials and very quiet fans. The ambient noise in the middle of our office stays at around 37 to 38 decibels loud. The back of the Threadripper C while idling measures at around 46 to 47 decibels, and while running Cinebench R20, it measured all the way up to 
55 decibels loud. In contrast, the Mac Pro idled at around 38 decibels, which is basically completely silent. And after many runs of Cinebench R20, it measured slightly higher at around 39 decibels, much lower than the PC at idle. And the most annoying thing about this PC is that the fans kick up pretty loud every time you open up a new app or change settings, even sometimes in the web browser, just because of how much wattage it pushes to the CPU. And even with this much performance, we notice that macOS is still much snappier than Windows while doing basic tasks and doing things like installing programs and unzipping files, which is why a lot of people prefer Macs. For example, we had apps freeze multiple times on this PC just in the time that we were doing this test and absolutely zero freezes or issues with the Mac Pro running Mac OS. In terms of temps while running Cinebench R20, the Mac Pro got up to 69 degrees while the Threadripper PC reached a high of 79 degrees, which is still very impressive thanks to the massive water cooling system, but it did have to run at full blast to keep it at 79 degrees. Now moving on to graphics benchmarks, we tested Geekbench 5 using Metal on the Mac Pro and CUDA on the PC, which is the best case scenario for both systems. Here, the PC scored over 50% higher than the Mac Pro, which is impressive considering the fact that you can get it for around $1,250 compared to paying Apple $2,400 for the Vega 2 upgrade. So with that, we decided to test out gaming performance using the Unigen Heaven benchmark on the Extreme preset, and the PC got 210 frames per second compared to 140. 14 on the Mac Pro. And even with that much FPS, the 2080 Ti graphics card in the PC stayed at a cool 70 degrees thanks to its triple slot cooler. The Mac Pro's Vega 2 GPU ran at 81 degrees, but the difference was that it stayed completely silent throughout the test. In fact, even when we max out the CPU and the GPU at the same time by running Cinebench R20 and Unigen Heaven simultaneously, it remained basically silent, which is incredibly impressive. We also tested graphics card rendering in the Blender benchmark, and the Threadripper PC finished the BMW M Classroom test in only 3 minutes and 8 seconds, compared to 15 minutes and 54 seconds on the Mac Pro. But that was in Mac OS, where graphics rendering is new for Blender, and it seems to not be optimized, as a weaker AMD GPU was much faster under Windows. Since this PC's motherboard supports PCI Express 4, we took advantage of it with a super fast 1TB M.2 SSD, which got read speeds to a massive 4,995 megabytes per second compared to 2992 on the Mac Pro. And for write speeds, the PC got 4,257 compared to 2,948 on the Mac Pro's 1TB SSD. This is something you won't be able to get on the Mac Pro from a single storage drive because the 2019 Mac Pro is forever limited to PCI Express 3.0, which is a bummer. Now moving on to photo editing and Lightroom, the Threadripper does an amazing job in terms of editing smoothness, as does the Mac, but when exporting 542 megapixel edited raw images, it's only 42% faster than the Mac Pro. Instead of over 300% faster in Cinebench, even though all 32 cores were being maxed out, which is quite a surprise. This shows that having so many extra cores doesn't necessarily mean that it will scale in real world usage. Now before we get into video editing performance where we start to see a very different trend in results, I want to reveal how we were able to get this Threadripper PC to power Apple's 6K Pro Display XDR. We did it by installing a very special dual Thunderbolt 3 port add-in card, which uses two DisplayPort imports from your graphics card to create two Thunderbolt 3 ports, which we use to connect the display. This allows us to not only use the Pro Display XDR, but to get it working both at 10-bit and 6K resolution, which is really impressive, seeing as it's a custom Windows PC and running AMD processors. Now finally, let's get into video editing where we start with Premiere Pro because it's by far the most used program. The PC does a good job putting the Threadripper and Nvidia GPU to use, but so does the Mac Pro with Metal. At times, I did notice a smoothness difference in favor of the Mac because the PC would drop frames at times when I start playback or when scrubbing through the timeline. When it came time to export regular 4K, the Mac Pro surprisingly took the lead even though both systems were not maxing out the CPU or the graphics. This is where optimizations start coming in and Apple's Metal API starts to kick in. If you're somebody that works with HEVC footage, the Mac Pro is way better here. Scrubbing in the timeline is much smoother and it exports our test project almost three times faster. This is because the Mac Pro has Apple's T2 chip, which greatly speeds up encoding, 
and their only computer that doesn't have it, the 5K iMac, takes about the same time as this Threadripper. Stabilization is also faster with the Mac Pro, which is really weird since the PC's single core speed is actually faster, so maybe it's just Mac OS. Now for some positives. Playing back tough C200 footage is much smoother on the Threadripper at about 45 frames per second compared to 24 on the Mac Pro. This is because Premiere isn't optimized and doesn't use graphics like Final Cut or Resolve, so the extra 20 cores comes in pretty handy. Exporting this graded 4K60 project is more than twice as fast with the PC because it is all CPU based, so if you work with this footage in Premiere Pro, you want as much cores as you can possibly get your hands on. Now let's touch on Resolve, which is much more optimized in general and makes way more use of the graphics than CPU cores. I started with a famous candle benchmark that tests the video editing performance of the GPUs, and surprisingly, both graphics cards performed exactly the same, reaching 18 frames per second while being maxed out. Next, we denoised 4K Blackmagic RAW and the results were exactly the same, running between 22 and 24 frames per second, showing us that even though the 2080 Ti is much more powerful for gaming and other tasks, for video editing, the Vega 2 paired with Apple's Metal API really holds its own. Editing smoothness and resolve is excellent for both and exports are much faster than Premiere, sometimes even beating out Final Cut. There are also some advantages with Windows, which does allow the graphics card to encode the video, and the latest version of Resolve uses NVIDIA graphics to decode Red Raw, allowing for perfect full 8K playback without needing a 28 or 32 core CPU. Now Resolve has these exact features ready for macOS as well, and the next version should enable them. Our Mac Pro also has a big advantage you can't get with any other computer, and that is the Afterburner card, which completely takes the load off of the CPU for ProRes and ProRes Raw, allowing even an 8-core CPU to play back 6 streams of 8K ProRes RAW footage where this beastly 32-core would only handle 3 and the best 28-core Mac Pro without Afterburner would only handle 2. There are so much more differences in terms of video editing and each system has its strong points, but to properly show you guys, we need to make a dedicated video, so if you guys want to see that, use the link in the video description after this one is over. Now while it seems that this $5,000 Threadripper PC totally blows away our $15,000 Mac Pro, and it definitely does in certain tasks, there are a few things that the Mac Pro has that this PC simply cannot get, and a cool bonus feature that the PC has. First off, you can get up to 768GB of RAM in this Mac Pro, or 1.5TB with the higher spec CPUs, significantly higher than the 256GB on this PC. The case is also very unique, making it incredibly easy to work on, unlike the pretty complicated case we used on the Threadripper PC. And the Mac Pro also offers incredibly silent workflows, whereas the Threadripper is honestly annoying to work by, even after tuning the fans and using this case designed to lower noise. The Mac Pro also offers 8 Thunderbolt 3 ports with the ability to have 12, which you simply cannot get on any PC, and the last big difference is the work workstation grade parts, and more expensive components in general. Even though we bought a really nice motherboard, Apple's offers way more ports as far as PCI, and the power supply can actually handle 4 Vega 2 graphics cards. Along with that, Threadripper CPUs don't naturally compete with Xeons, that would be AMD's Epic line, which costs more and actually runs slower. On top of that, the Vega 2 graphics is also a workstation grade card, and gets 32GB of ultra-fast HBM2 memory compared to only 11 on the 2080 Ti, which will help a lot in tasks that use a lot of VRAM. To be comparable, we would need at least a Quadro RTX 6000, which by itself would nearly double our build price while still being short 6 gigs of memory, and the memory is 30% slower than HBM2. But not everybody needs those things for their work. Along with that, the Mac Pro comes completely ready to go out of the box, you just plug it in and you're off. Whereas with the Threadripper build, it took us a while to find all the parts, make sure everything's compatible, get it in. Uh, it took us a full day to get it built and set up and optimized. And for some people, if you have issues or you're not good at it, it might take you a couple of days. And those couple of days could be worth thousands of dollars if you are a professional. So there definitely is 
this value and having a system that is just ready to go. Now, not everybody needs these things I just mentioned, and in those cases, you can get much more bang for the buck and more upgradeability with the Windows Threadripper PC. And our Threadripper has one other advantage, built-in wireless charging on the top of the case. So there you guys have it. That was our $5,000 Threadripper PC compared to our $15,000 Mac Pro. If you wanna see a detailed video editing comparison, follow the link in the description. And if you wanna see how we built it, check out that video right there for our step-by-step -step guide and click the circle above to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.